Thanks for tuning in to the Wise Eats Podcast. For more on this episode, head over to wise-eats.com slash episode 25. That's where you'll find the pictures, show notes, YouTube video, and a whole bunch more. Thanks for listening and watching. Have a great day and make wise choices. What's up, wise guys and gals? Welcome to episode 25 of the Wise Eats Podcast. I'm former fat guy and certified fitness coach, Wes Wise. Today, I want to talk to you guys about natural flavors. You know, take a look around at the ingredient list of some of the things in your kitchen, and chances are you're going to see natural flavors listed on the ingredient list somewhere. And it's no surprise. I was shocked to learn that natural flavors are the fourth most frequently used ingredient in our food supply next to water, salt, and sugar. But are they really natural and good for you? I wanted to find out for myself, so I did a little research and will share my findings in this episode. I'm going to talk about what they are, what's in them, are they really natural, are they good for you, the risks that they carry, some key takeaways, and a bunch more. So let's get down to business. It's time to wise up. Natural flavor. Naturally flavored. Yep, right there, natural flavors. Oh boy, we got a theme going here. <laughs> so what are natural flavors? Natural flavors are complex mixtures made from plant or animal sources that are created by specially trained food chemists. They are used to enhance taste, maintain consistency, and make products more addictive. While they come primarily from plant or animal sources, these mixtures can contain more than 100 different chemicals, including preservatives, solvents, and other substances. These chemicals are known as incidental additives. Food manufacturers are not required to disclose whether these extra ingredients are natural or synthetic. As long as the original flavor source comes from plant or animal material, it's classified as natural flavor. It Everything. makes you feel good. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. but what it's is a good? natural, it's natural. It's natural. And, and, you know, the, so as far as what is in natural flavoring, it can be any combination of different plant or animal sources. So here's the list. It can be spices, fruit, vegetables, different uh, other plant materials, dairy products, meat, poultry, seafood, or eggs. But that's not all. There are over 2,500 chemically defined flavor substances used in the United States and Europe. The FDA allows most flavorings to be designated as generally recognized as safe, but these GRASs are not closely regulated. Some experts estimate that the FDA may be unaware of around 1,000 chemicals currently being used in the food system. Well, once again, just read the ingredients, you guys. If you see natural flavorings, skip. You don't need these, right? So there's two big problems with natural flavors. First is that they often have additional ingredients in them like preservatives and stabilizers that help the flavors work better in the food, but those don't have to come from natural sources. Second, companies aren't required to disclose the specific ingredients contained in that, the natural flavoring, so it makes it impossible to avoid certain food groups. For instance, a vegan who wants to avoid animal products. Uh, natural flavors may also contain MSG, gluten, or GMOs. Monosodium glutamate buttermilk. Wake up! Now what about natural versus artificial flavors? Actually, they're kind of the same thing. Natural flavors have to come from plant or animal sources, whereas artificial flavors are man-made, but they're both very similar in terms of composition and the health effects that they have. Corn, vegetable oil, maltodextrin, artificial flavor? Got no time for that, Jack. We gotta wake up. Uh, many products use a combination of both natural and, and artificial flavor, with as much as 80 to 90 percent of the ingredients coming from chemical solvents and preservatives. This is nothing but a MSG, chemically enhanced, preservative bomb. So what about organic natural flavors? In order to be certified organic, the natural flavor has to contain at least 95 percent organically grown base ingredients. It cannot be made using synthetic extraction solvents and can't contain any synthetic carriers, artificial preservatives, or GMOs. Organic doesn't mean that it's not going to have some kind of hidden toxic ingredients in it, but it's a step up. So I would say if you are going to consume a product that has natural flavors, try to lean towards organic when you can. Yeah, I'm going to be natural. Now what about the risks of natural flavoring? The biggest risk with natural flavors is allergic reactions. Although natural flavorings must meet safety criteria, individual reactions can occur. 
Since ingredients are not disclosed, people with allergies or those on special diets should be very cautious about consuming them. This is a major challenge because of the abundance of natural flavors in our food supply. Many people are unknowingly poisoning themselves, having no knowledge of what they're putting in their bodies. Until companies are forced to reveal what is contained in their natural secret formulas, the long-term health ramifications will be unknown. That natural vanilla flavoring has been known to come from the anal glands of beavers. Now you may be thinking to yourself, hey Wes, do you eat natural flavors? And yes, I will admit I do. And writing this article opened my eyes to that in a big way. I looked around my kitchen and identified all the different products I'm using that contain natural flavors. And there was a lot. <laughs> So um, here's the list. I use an Amazing Greens grass powder that has natural flavoring. Chewing gum, oh my goodness, extra chewing gum. I, that's just loaded with not only natural flavors, but all kinds of other BS. So I'm cutting that junk out. Our dog food, dog treats, Kodiak pancake mix, which we love. We have that all the time. LaCroix, which those are the soft drinks. I don't drink those. My wife drinks them. She enjoys them, but they have natural flavors. Pickles, Pulse pre-workout. RX bars, sriracha sauce, uh, stevia sweeteners. We use these little stevia monk fruit packets. So it's got stevia and monk fruit and then natural flavoring. What's that? Okay. It's a, I thought it was, I always thought that was kind of a limited ingredient thing, but it's not. You got to watch that. Whey protein isolate. We'll get into that in a minute. Yellow mustard, Zevia. Zevia has been like my savior from uh, abstaining from alcohol. I kind of if I'm trying to be social, I'll drink some Zevias on ice. Those things are probably loaded with God knows what kind of chemicals they use to make those things taste so good. So, man, maybe the Zevia is out too. We'll see. Um, they can add different chemicals to these natural products to get that flavor out of there. Wait a minute. They're adding chemicals mm, to natural yes, yes, products? Yes, they are. If nothing else, seeing natural flavors as an ingredient should be a signal that reminds you that this product is man-made and you should lean towards whole, natural foods whenever possible. I know I'm going to be trying to gradually phase these things out of my diet and just use them in moderation. I later on found out that the ingredient on the back here is not just this, it's natural flavoring. So there are many products outside of the things that I just named in my own kitchen that contain natural flavoring, like breakfast cereal, canned goods, flavored yogurt, and pretty much anything that is processed is going to have natural flavors in it. So take a look for yourself and consider making some changes. And I mean, you're going to see that a lot of the things you're having are most likely having natural flavors in them. And you have no idea what that means. Um, if you want a naturally uh, flavored apple or blueberry or peach in a product, then just have the fruits and you don't have to worry about how it's been altered in any way. So I'm going to dive into sort of a natural flavoring case study in a minute with one of my favorite products. But before I do that, let's break for our recipe of the week. Our recipe of the week is the Wise Eats Nutter Butter Bars. I originally intended this recipe to be a healthy protein bar. I wanted to make something that I didn't have to, you know, buy from the store or whatever. Just wanted a homemade, healthy, simple protein bar. And I found a recipe on the Ambitious Kitchen and I kind of tweaked it and uh, made a, a healthy protein bar. And my wife loves this recipe. She says that it tastes like the Nutter Butter. I don't remember what those taste like, so I kind of had to take her word for it. But we both love it. It's delicious. It's kind of it's a little bit higher fat, but add add in that that whey protein isolate and get a good uh, protein kick. And it's made with all you know normal ingredients. Conventional protein bars are loaded with artificial sweeteners, added sugars, and other chemicals that make them delicious and addictive, but also toxic. So treat your body with real food. It's wise-eats.com/nutterbutter. It's made with peanut butter, local raw honey, chia seeds, uh, crushed salted almonds, oat bran, just a lot of really good things for your body. For a quick, delicious peanut butter protein fix when you're on the go, get in the kitchen and make a wise decision. Okay, so back to the natural flavors. One of my very favorite products is Legion Athletics Whey Protein Isolate. We use it in a lot of different recipes and our shakes, but the problem is I noticed recently it contains natural flavors and I, I knew that before I just didn't think much of it but writing this article now I'm like okay so what's in these natural flavors that's in this protein isolate and since manufacturers aren't required to disclose the ingredients in their natural flavors there's no way to really know one thing that you can do though is contact the company directly and see what they say and that's exactly what I did for this I reached out to Mike Matthews because 
he's a great coach and he, uh, I follow all his content and I love his products and he's very transparent. I appreciate that about his, his business. So in any way he got back to me, here was his response. Hey Wes, thanks for getting in touch. All flavoring is actually handled by our manufacturer and that information is proprietary. They don't give us the exact breakdown to protect the recipe, but it is entirely natural flavoring, which means its original source is from a plant or animal, whereas artificial flavors can be created in a lab. Flavorings that are harmful wouldn't be approved by the FDA, so you can rest assured it's not toxins or unknown chemicals. I hope this helps. Mike, just feed me a line of bowl right now. I know you are. It's natural. So I appreciate Mike's response, but did it give me any warm, fuzzy feeling about the safety of his natural flavoring? Not at all. You know, without knowing the exact ingredients of the natural flavoring, it's all speculation. As much as I love Legion Athletics products, I'm skeptical of any company that cannot or will not disclose their ingredient list, regardless of the reasoning. And also as a supplement producer, Transferring the responsibility to the FDA is kind of irresponsible, in my opinion. You should know and be able to tell your customers what's in your products. Bottom line. So does this mean that I'm abandoning Legion Athletics products altogether? No. Um, not yet, anyway. And I plan to limit my use of the vanilla whey and switch to an unflavored protein. And actually, the Naked brand looks to be like a really good limited ingredient protein that I might possibly switch to. We already use them for our chocolate casein protein, um, a couple other ones. So I might switch to them. I'm also using a pea protein now that's completely unflavored. The only ingredient in it is pea protein. It's not bad at all. It's actually kind of, it's not bad at all. So the important thing is to become aware of the things you're putting in your body and understanding where it comes from. Ask yourself, do you trust the company? Do you trust the product? And how do you feel when you consume that product? I'm kind of disappointed in Starbucks because almost all of their flavored drinks, like the Frappuccino here, have natural flavor. So what's the wise choice? While it's possible that some natural flavors are perfectly safe and good for you, there's no way to know for sure. There could be as many as 100 barely regulated, generally safe, hidden ingredients in a single natural flavor. The only way to protect yourself completely is to stay away from them and choose organic whenever possible. In general, avoid processed foods and stick with whole, real foods. Only buy products from companies you trust with ingredient lists that you understand. For many of the items in your kitchen, there are flavor-free alternatives that you can use, such as uh, plain oatmeal, for instance. Then you can add your own sweeteners and spices to it. With the lack of transparency in our food supply, maintaining control of the things you put in your body is always a wise choice. Well, you, you know, eat whole foods if you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> just eat bananas an and apple. lettuce. So just to sum up, I want to give you five key takeaways from this podcast episode. Number one is that natural flavors are the fourth most frequently used ingredient in our food supply next to water, salt, and sugar. Number two, although natural flavors come from plant or animal sources, they may also contain as many as 100 additional chemicals. Number three, most ingredients in natural flavoring are not closely regulated. Number four, the only way to protect yourself completely is to stay away from natural flavors as much as possible. Number five, choose real food over synthetic, man-made products and consume natural flavors only in moderation. You always put things in such good perspective. Just keep it in mind when you're reading the <laughs> Not everything natural is great either. So that's going to do it for the natural flavors episode. I hope you got some value out of it. If you did, please like and subscribe to the YouTube video. Leave a five-star iTunes review if you're listening on podcast. And uh, I know I learned a lot from putting this episode together, so I hope you enjoyed it. But before I go, let's jump into a quick word of the wise. I got a message from Adam, who left a five-star iTunes review, which I appreciate so much. That's huge for me. He says, I found your site by searching some Beyond Bigger, Leaner, Stronger info on Google. And that's the workout program that I was doing uh, months ago. I have also been a fan of Mike Matthews' work. While Mike's work is great and really cuts through the BS of the industry... I was psyched to see that your background lends itself more to a guy like me. I was a fat kid growing up, so fitness and nutrition have been a huge part of my adult life. Also, like you, I was a big smoker from 19 to 35 and still enjoy having a few pops on the weekend. I do not believe Matthews ever drank or smoked, so while I love his material, it is awesome for me to see a success story like yours that more aligns with my life. I have roller coastered between fit and and out of shape ever since my daughter was born seven years ago. I'm now back on track and trying to lose 30 pounds. 
I have really enjoyed your story, podcast, and website. Just wanted to say thank you for all of your efforts and congrats on your amazing journey. You look amazing. Peace, Adam. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that five-star iTunes review. This type of message is precisely what I was hoping to get when I started doing this thing because I just wanted to share the message that if you can do this, or I mean, if I can do this, you can do this. And uh, I'm so proud of it, uh, proud of you, Adam, for taking control of your health and being an inspiration to your, your seven-year-old daughter. So I hope you keep it up, keep crushing it, keep making wise choices. Thanks for the message. And uh, for everybody else out there, wise up, start focusing on your health, be an inspiration to other people. Whether you realize it or not, people are looking up to you and be the example to, to others. So with that said, I appreciate you listening to this episode or watching on YouTube. Get out there, avoid them natural flavorings. They're in everything. They're the worst. And until next time, have a great day and make wise choices. The biggest risk is allergic reactions. Although natural flavings, natural... <clears throat> So what about the risks of natural flavors? The biggest risk... Just look on the ingredient. If you see natural flavoring, skip. For a quick, delicious peanut butter protein fix when you're on the go... <laughs> For a quick, delicious protein... <laughs> For a quick, delicious peanut butter protein fix when you're on the go, get in the... <laughs> Even if something is naturally flavored, the rest of the ingredients may be total garbage. <laughs> so, you know, is it, so it's good, it's fine to eat mm -hmm. the natural flavors. One of my very favorite products, <laughs> it's impossible to know <laughs> So what is the wise choice? When it, it's natural. There can be as many as a one. Did I immediately throw each and every one of these items away in my kitchen immediately? No, I didn't. But I kind of wanted to, to be honest. <laughs>